Morning guys, we're headed down to the Mosh today, which is the Museum of Science and History. It's a pretty big museum here, and this is where we were the other day with the fountain. So uh, we're gonna go and see what kind of exhibits they have. <laughs> Want to go learn about some big an sea animals? Look at that. Those are the skeletons of a manatee and a pilot whale. See this right here is called a pilot whale. Pilot whale? And that's his bones that are in his body. Is that, is that real bones? Those are real bones. Real bones? Yeah. Wow. Look bud, look how big these turtle shells. Yeah. This looks like it might be a ninja turtle shell because it's big. That kind of looks like Crush from Finding Nemo. So the turtle that we ate in a previous video when we were at Krista's uncle's house was a loggerhead turtle. It's this big giant thing right here. Just to give you an idea, this is the like a smaller sea turtle and this is a huge loggerhead turtle. Isn't that crazy? It was delicious. <laughs> that is an Allosaurus, bud. Is that cool? Yeah. Do you have any questions yeah. so far? It looks like an urchin inside of a shell. Is that what that is? Yeah. So those species of urchins are called pencil urchins. Yeah. They have really dull spines, which enables them to get into um, rocks and shells like that without breaking their spines. Oh. Whereas one that has much sharper spines, like this one down there, they yeah. have a hard time getting into those spines. Gotcha. Coal and it boils it in turbine and then it makes electricity. Congratulations, you can now control the power plant. So now we're gonna flip the switch. These screens aren't working very well. That one works? You're able to light it up? This one was working. Does it move up? Yeah, it works, but the lights don't light up. <laughs> this exhibit can use a little work. <laughs> so this is a timeline of electricity. Who knew this? Joseph Swan, a British scientist, was the first one to discover uh, the light in a carbon filament. And then months later, Thomas Edison figured it out. And Einstein. Did you guys know that? That light energy could be used to produce electricity. I didn't Einstein? Know. Wow, back in the 1905? Back in the 1905? The back in the 1905. So that's whenever the idea behind it was born. So when did solar actually become legit? It doesn't say. Let's see if we can get our cell phone to charge, okay? You appreciate what you have, huh? I got 30, Dad got 60. You got all the way to the top. Makes <laughs> you appreciate what uh, yeah, she can do. Yeah. <laughs> can she get four? Oh, oh she just got, got four. four. Keep, keep going. going, you gotta keep oh, going. There you five. go. Oh, five watts in the phone. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> it's hard, huh? What is that? It's an old fire truck, bud. See, they'd have to store their water inside this big, uh, this big container. And then they connect their hoses to it to help put out the fires. Is that cool? Yeah. So in 1901, there was a fire that destroyed 146 block of downtown, $15 million of damage. Look, you want to wear that? What is that? That's a fire suit. Yeah. It's called the Iron Lung. It's supposed to protect a fireman from fires whenever they're putting out fires. I do not want to wear that. You don't want to wear that? I don't either. Why? Because <laughs> it looks heavy. It's making the, uh, the fire truck move. You have an engine. How do you think it moves? What do you think all that's for over there? I think that's the 
It's a horse harness. That's the water They'd attach a horse to it and the horse would pull it. Because they didn't have cars yet. Is that I guess interesting? Also, like special yeah. horses to not spook. Yeah, not spook near the fires. Yeah. It's really neat that they have one so well preserved. It's called a pump wagon. On loan from the Jacksonville Fire Museum. So this is a new exhibit that they have called Health in Motion. I thought it was supposed to open tomorrow, but uh, they have it open now. This is great. Is that cool, bud? Yeah. Yeah. The skeleton, skeletal system is all your bones in your body. And the muscular system is all the muscles in your body that make you strong. Um. Yeah. Let's go see what else we can find. That's your digestive system. Is that cool? See how your bones work? So this is all the native plants here in Florida. That's a huge turtle. All right, guys, we're moving up to the second story. I think this is where the dinosaur exhibit is. They had like a little preview down there, basically. And, uh, oh, there's three stories here. Cool. This place is huge. This one's called Darwin and Dinosaurs. Found in England. When? It doesn't, it doesn't say. say. Oh, wait, yeah. In the uh, 1718? 1820. 1820, wow. What'd you see, bud? That big dinosaur. Cool, that is, it's an ichthyosaur. Oh. That was found 205 years ago. This is the dinosaur. Can you imagine if you walked close to one of those? How that. big it is? That's taller than dad. <laughs> yeah, that's like a seven foot person. Yeah. Go up to that scale. Want me to get up here? You're only six feet tall. And how tall is the dinosaur leg? Eleven. That's right. That's you almost are, double. You're three and a half feet tall. Or almost, almost tall. four. Three and three quarters. And then me. And then you, where are you? You're three feet three tall, feet bud. Tall. <laughs> How tall do you think mom is? Yep. Five and a half. So this okay. lady, Mary Anning, uh -huh. discovered all these. That's she wasn't credited with any of this. The lady down there, yeah. She was a woman. And oh. women couldn't join scientific society. So she never, so they, they never, never gave her credit for, credit all for these finding all these things. Wow. Hold on. That's interesting. And that was 18, 1820s ish? Yeah, yeah. She was born in 1799. Her name's Mary Anning. So she found the first flying thing, the ichthyosaur. She found an ichthyosaur, um, a pleosaur. She found the pleosaur. And did she. Wow. Buddy, look, this is a T-Rex Look how big that head is. Whoa, is that as big as your head? No. No, it's bigger. <laughs> you could fit inside there. The dinosaur died, and then over time, his body got eaten by a bunch of insects and all kind of other things and bacteria, and it just left the skeleton. And then over time, things grew on top of it, and it got buried down into the earth. And then the man uh, dug it up. He's called an archaeologist. And he digs and digs until he finds the bones. And then he brings them to museums like this so we can look at them, so we can discover what was there a long time ago. All oh, these dinosaurs are so cool. So Christian just taught me something about these turtles here that are on the Galapagos Islands. This one has a dome shape, a saddleback, so that its neck can reach up higher, and this one right here, so its neck can reach up higher to eat higher things. And this one is dome shaped because it ate more towards the ground. So this one's on an island where the vegetation is higher. Right. So if its neck didn't do that, it they wouldn't be able, be able to. Food. Yeah. So they These wouldn't be guys, able to survive. Yeah. The plants are on the ground, so there's no reason for them to need like a bigger to have a higher shell, the saddleback shell, yeah. so saddleback shell safe. So they all originated from South America, but they're all different on the different islands, being on the habitat. Ah. So that is good, sir. Evidence for evolution. Evolution. Yeah. Interesting. 
So this was a fossil found in 1834. It says that there were some errors made whenever they were doing their first reconstruction of the dinosaur. And uh, we think this little uh, nose horn right there was actually supposed to be uh, a finger. <laughs> That's funny. What is this one? John Glenn's Mercury space suit? What's so great about it? Um, it was like attached to this thing, pumped in liquid oxygen, which cooled them all. Ah. So whenever they were on the spaceship, they would connect to the spaceship's system. Whatever yeah. They were moving around like this. Ah. They put that on the top of the rocket. Shoots them. Shoots them up into the air. So they can go study space. It's called the nose cone. That's how they get back to Earth. Oh, that's how they get back? Yeah. All right, guys, we had lunch. We're going back down to the mosh to check out some of the exhibits that we didn't get to see yet. They also have a kid's space here where it's like a playground treehouse thing. So we're going to let the kids run around a little bit. Walking up the treehouse. Go on up, go on up, go on up. See, look. Safe and sound. There's not even any kids up here. <laughs> and that's it. It's a big tree. I see you. <laughs> yeah. See, you can step down these steps here. There's this one called Currents of Time, and it's the history of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. This is about uh, how people started. Look, they made a canoe out of wood and a basket out of twigs. And they'd carry their fruit in there. It's like a slingshot. And they have a slingshot so they can kill things or move things out the way. And then this is their barbecue pit. See, look, they put a fire under there and they would smoke their fish on top. And then they would eat fish. And this is what they look like, kind of like uh, Native Americans, huh? Yeah. Ah, uh, looks like he's working on something. What do you think he's working on? A tool, maybe? And he's using his shells and rocks as other tools. And then this man made a bow and arrow. Do you like bow and arrows, bud? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat, huh? He's got a big long bow, and a sh he used a sharp stone to make the arrow. They have different kind of rocks, and they found some copper. Tattooing implements. So now some people have tattoos on their bodies. They would they use some of these things right here to make tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get a tattoo? <laughs> I heard these guys are pretty good. <laughs> look, bud, look what you did. It's moving. This is how a steam train works. That's a big blade and it's a saw, and they use that to cut wood and to cut other things. Is that kind of neat? Because once you can cut big pieces of wood, then you can make a ship. And then people can now travel. They can go back to England if they want to, or the Americans can go to England. They can go across the ocean. You know how whenever we go to the beach, there's all that water? You gotta have a big boat to get on that water. That's right. What does it look like? A train light. That's right. That's a big giant train light. Oh. Is that cool? That's the big light that you see on the train whenever it's coming down the railroad tracks. Oh. Yeah. Cool. This was the first one that was ever made is right here. Oh. Is that cool? That was uh, back in 1832. 19th century middle class, that'd be the 1800s? Yeah, 1800s. There's a book? And they wrote on chalkboards. That's their school desk down there. Man, they had to have been hot in something you like that. that. Dress in the other one? Yeah. Oh, do you know what that is right there? No. What is it? What do you think it might be? A music player. A music player? That's a good guess, Amelia. But a telephone. See, how did you figure that out? I saw that little phone. You saw the phone thing hanging on the side. So the way it worked is it would ring, you see the bells on top? Mm -hmm. And then you would pick that thing up off that and put that up to your ear and you would talk into the big pokey thing right here. Oh. Yeah, that's what a telephone used to look like. Now they look like this. We've come a long way, huh? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think they brought their telephones with them? That whenever one, they're going out? That would be stuck to the wall. It's stuck to the wall, that's right. You, back in the day, all telephones had to be connected by a wire. And so they had to stay at home. So now, because of technology, we've figured out how to not have to have a wire to make a phone call. Wait, y'all used to have that? We, well, we didn't have one like that. I bet we'll see another kind of telephone uh, later on in the exhibit. Let's look and see if we can find one. See that black thing back there? It's kind of square. What do you think that is? A train. A train? What do you think it is, bud? A train. Nope. Try again. It's not a train. A music thing. No, it's not a music thing. A uh, pump. Then I'll give you a hint. I'm holding something. A like camera. A camera. That's right, but it only took pictures. You couldn't take videos with it. So that's an old kind of camera and you had to fold it in and up to carry it. Did you find a phone? Yes. Yeah, you did. It's a pay phone. See, that's the wire that connects to it because you had to have a wire on all those phones. So this last exhibit's on the third floor. It's the Leonardo da Vinci exhibit. It's a traveling exhibit and uh, this is pretty neat. They have replicas of all of his stuff. It says, gently, Amelia, gently turn the wheel. And uh, I'll show you all some of the inventions that he has. This is the first odometer to know how far you've gone in a car. You want to go see what else they have? It's a spring-driven car. I'm trying to see how does it move. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's working right now. Variable speed drive. Okay, so this is what they use in cars. So whenever a car goes and it gets too fast, it can switch down to the next gear. So it would go down and then you would go in at a faster speed but without as much turning. Naval engineering, double hull for ships. Leonardo devised double hulls for ships as a safety measure. Keep the vessel afloat. Ah, because you have air in between. Smart. Hydraulic screw. So the water would come through here, it would flow down and hit the blades and spin, and then that would cause all these other things to spin. Oh, look, this right here. People on a ship, oh, yeah. they would turn this and that would make the paddles move so that the boats can move. It doesn't work. But it's not working. Yeah, it's not connected together. Whoa. Mobile warfare. A military tank. Wow. So he basically figured out like the way gears work, like are good ways to use them, I guess. That's interesting.